Hey, it's Tom, and today I want to share with you my thoughts about the transition to an ARM-based MacBook while being a software developer. So last week Apple presented a new ARM-based M1 chip, and they also presented a new MacBook Pro, 13-inch MacBook Pro, with this one ARM-based chip. Uh, to be honest, I was really waiting for an updated version of 16-inch MacBook Pro, uh, still believing that it will be Intel-based. However, that didn't happen, so I am forced to buy the current 16-inch model to update my old one, my, my old MacBook Pro. And uh, to be honest, I'm not going to switch to an ARM-based architecture anytime soon. And in this video, I will try to explain you why I'm not considering to switch to a 13-inch MacBook Pro or why I'm not waiting till the next year to buy an updated 16-inch MacBook Pro with probably ARM-based chip, maybe M1 Pro or M1X. Okay, so let's start with the arguments. So a lot of people may say that Apple Silicon is future-proof and it's definitely worth to buy an Apple Silicon MacBook because uh, it will be uh, valid for work for much longer than Intel-based MacBooks. Okay, um, that's true. Of course, if I will buy an Intel-based MacBook Pro, I will surely want to sell it in three years uh, because most of the apps or more than 99% of the apps that I'm using uh, will definitely be rewritten and will be working great uh, using an ARM architecture. However, being a software developer means that you have to work efficiently right now, not in one year, not in two years, but you have to think about how to work in the most effective way right now. And right now, the most effective way is to stay with Intel-based architecture. And you may also say that, okay, but you will lose a lot of money. Yes, that's true. Uh, in three years, probably there will be only a small group of people that will want to buy an Intel-based MacBook. Uh, so the price will drop definitely. Uh, they will be cheap because mm, not so many people will want to buy them. Uh, it will be different situation with uh, ARM-based MacBooks uh, because they will be future-proof. However, once again, being a software developer doesn't mean you, ha you have to uh, buy the, the most future-proof hardware and uh, you have to uh, look for biggest savings, but I believe that buying right now an ARM-based architecture uh, will cause me more problems and will cause me to lose more money than I will save by buying it. So uh, even counting the losing value of uh, Intel-based uh, MacBooks, it's still worth to do this. And this leads us to the next argument. So. Uh, Apple during the presentation presented us uh, the Final Cut Pro, the Xcode and uh, a couple other apps and they are working definitely much, much faster than they were working um, on the Intel-based architecture. However, once again, these were only the apps written by Apple. And even if you are an iOS developer, you are not only using software uh, developed by Apple, uh, but definitely you are also using other applications. And if you are not an iOS dev developer only, uh, but uh, if you are, for example, web developer, if you are backend dev developer, uh, then for sure you're using tons of software written by third-party uh, companies, uh, which didn't have access to an M1 chip and ARM architecture uh, used by Apple. And those applications will, uh, some part of them will work with Rosetta 2. However, uh, if you are as old as I am, you, you probably remember switching from PowerPC to Intel. There was also Rosetta, but for at least two years, nothing was working as expected. There were tons of problems and many years ago, there were less third-party apps that I was at least using. And right now we have tons of apps that we are using as a software developers. And uh, the very one which is very uh, popular and uh, widely used is the Docker. And 
You may think that, okay, Docker has a lot of money, a lot of resources, so um, the app will work immediately or is already working maybe. And that's not true because even though they are a big company, they have many resources, they have tons of money that they can spend on the development, uh, they already have problems. And uh, to today, they, uh, they also published a blog post and uh, you can see this blog post right now. Uh, short story long, uh, they didn't get the uh, M1 processor to, to work on previously. Uh, they were only using the transition kit. Uh, and right now they don't really know when Docker will work correctly. And uh, if you will also see uh, the current issue in GitHub uh, that you are probably seeing right now, um, you may notice that um, it's, it's bringing a lot of problems to developers already. So if Docker as a company doesn't really know when they will solve all issues, then I'm nearly sure that it will take a year or even maybe more to, to, to make everything working correctly. And uh, please keep in mind that Docker is a big company. And let's think about smaller apps written, for example, by one developer or maybe a couple de developers as a third party, uh, as a side project, sorry and they don't have uh, a lot of time and a lot of resources to rewrite a lot of the code base, which might be, for example, written in C or C++, uh, not in Swift. So uh, uh, migrating that into an, another architecture might be really hard. And that brings a lot of problems. And this is the biggest argument uh, for not switching to ARM yet. As I mentioned, in two, three years, maybe, for sure. And right now, definitely not. Because as a software developer, uh, both me and you will lose a lot of time and uh, you will lose more money and uh, more time uh, trying to struggle and, and struggling to, to make it working than uh, you will save by buying the future-proof ARM-based uh, MacBook. Okay, last but not least, buying a new architecture uh, the first uh, computer ARM-based uh, chip from Apple makes you an early adapter. And that brings a lot of uh, potential problems, uh, which we have faced in the past. So if you are an early adopter, you don't really know what will happen with the first iteration of this project. Uh, you won't really know what problems uh, will appear in a half a year, in one year. Uh, maybe no one really want, will want to buy this ARM-based MacBooks in three years because it will turn out that uh, they have a lot of problems with, uh, I don't know, heating maybe, uh, or some problems with efficiency or some problems with battery. We don't really know what can happen. Uh, being an early adopter means that you can uh, play with new things, but that also means that uh, it's really risky and you don't really know what can happen. Okay, that's it. I just wanted to share with you my thoughts about switching to a new architecture. And because I've seen in, in, in a couple last days a lot of uh, tweets, a lot of posts about how it's good to switch to an ARM-based architecture and uh, how much time can it save uh, for, for example, iOS de developers. Uh, as I mentioned, these are only my thoughts. Uh, if you have other, uh, feel free to share them in the comments section where we can discuss. I, I really love talking about these kind of things. And uh, as I mentioned, I will still uh, stay with Intel-based uh, MacBooks. Uh, I'm going to uh, order a new 16-inch MacBook Pro with Intel uh, chip, and I believe it should work for me for two or three years. Okay. Thank you for your time, thank you for watching, and uh, see you next time. Bye!